In a preceding video I've showed that you can measure an EF filter with the help of an oscillator. Connect the EF filter in the oscillator circuit, and measure the frequency and watch with the oscilloscope how the EF filter works, whether it oscillates or not. There's also another way uh, to measure an EF uh, filter and that's this way with this device. It's a so-called wobulator. Wobulator. And I've made such a wobulator myself in the past. The principle from the wobulator is easy to understand uh, for uh, 455 uh, uh, kilocycles. For instance, this is the principal circuit. There is a 455 um, kilohertz uh, coil connected in an oscillator circuit. Parallel to that coil we connect uh, a varicap, that's a variable uh, uh, capacity diode. When the um, voltage is applied to the varicap, it changes its capacitance and that means that also the frequency from this oscillator coil also changes. Because the varicap is parallel to the, um, uh, to the tank circuit. This is also a time dependent circuit. Um, and um, that means that when we add uh, a sawtooth wave um, to the varicap, the frequency from the oscillator will sweep and it sweeps from 450 up to 460 kilocycles. And it does that every uh, one twenty-five uh, time of a second. I can set that sweep he frequency here. This is 19 hertz. 19 is the sweep fre frequency. And the maximum is 66. And here you see the effect from, from changing the sweep frequency. But uh, I will explain that later. It consists uh, of the uh, oscillator here in the circuit, the sweep oscillator. This is the sawtooth wave generator. It's here. This is the power supply. And here we have a small amplifier. And here is the filter under test. This filter is connected now uh, in an oscillator circuit. And um, every uh, 25 of fifths of a second, uh, the frequency through this filter is sweeped, swept between 450 and 460 kilohertz. So here the signal goes in, and here it goes out. And what we do next is that we measure the DC output voltage from the filter. That's here. We rectify the energy that passes the filter. And uh, it's, smooth, it's smoothened out with this capacitor. Now we have here a DC output voltage. And so we can see where the filter is working. Because um, when uh, the frequency is, for instance, uh, 450, we measure the output, DC output voltage uh, from the filter. And when it is 455, we also measure that uh, DC output, and also on 460. And uh, we can see that when the filter is in resonance, the, on the typical resonance frequency, the output voltage is at its highest level. And um, that means that we see a peak on the oscilloscope, because we have uh, also in the uh, oscillator circuit, Two connections. Um, this one goes to the vertical uh, input from the oscilloscope, and here uh, the frequency goes to the horizontal input. So what we see here now is a small band between 450 and 460 kilohertz. This is that's where our filter operates, and it is swept. And on all these moments here, we see the output, the DC output level from the filter. And what you can study then is how the filter acts. And um, it's interesting to see that um, the filter has a resonance peak, of course. 
that's given here uh, lowest frequency, highest frequency, output level. This is the normal, a normal peak, more or less from an EF filter. In real, it has a somewhat other shape, but this is a good peak. But when the coils inside the filter are too heavy coupled, there is a sort of uh, overcritical coupling, a too critical coupling between the two tank circuits, and that means that we see this output on the oscilloscope. And that, that's what we see here now. This is an EF filter where the two coils are over critically coupled, too critically coupled. And this will immediately affect the, the sound from your radio, because the, um, the radio signal is here amplified in the EF amplifier. And you will hear another type of sound compared to the normal situation where the peak is here approximately. So this is the normal situation. Now you will hear a normal sound and when you set the filter to couple the uh, two critical you will hear, an, hear another sound. Some parts of the audio spectrum will disappear. Now I'm going to try to set the filter to the right um, peak. So I turn it a little bit. And here you can see the normal passband from the ear filter. I try to uh, turn the coil again now. To do it with one hand, so it's very not easy, and uh, it doesn't succeed very well. Yes, here it is again over critical coupling. Now, I more than over critical, and you can see that uh, the complete band pass from the filter disappears, and now I turn it back again to a normal. Band pass. This is normal. And also here in this radio book, very old radio book from the 50s, uh, you can find the theory from all these uh, um, electronic uh, filter phenomenon. This is again a curve from an overcritical coupled this coupled filter in an EF amplifier. It has this curve. And um, this figure shows um, the property from a two-stage EF filter. Thus here it is over critical, two critical coupled. This is the normal coupling from the first EF, the EF filter in the EF amplifier. And the result is this line. And this shows how the uh, EF filter uh, peak finally uh, is present on the second EF filter and um, this line shows the properties from the EF amplifier, how the sound will be, how good all the frequencies between 20 Hz and approximately 10,000 Hz are passed, passed to the filter. you see again such a normal peak from an EF filter in the book. And here you see all kinds of ways to couple an EF filter. Of course when the distance changes the coupling will change and the peak will uh, show another way. Here also coupling but um, with this uh, device you can also uh, develop your own EF uh, filters. And when you see the right peak on the right location, on the right frequency, you know that you have made uh, a good filter.